What is annoying? Stubbing your toe is pretty annoying. Getting food stuck in your teeth? Boy, that sure is annoying. Having the same nightmare every night where you're back in high school and you pee your pants and everyone around you starts calling you a piss baby. I mean, I can't speak from experience, but that could be pretty annoying. There's a lot of things in this world that can annoy us, and sometimes that very thing might just be TF2. So that's why today on The What Show, it's time to get angry. It's time for me to take all of my pure, raw aggression and talk about the weapons in TF2 that tick me off the most. Weapons so positively tilting, I'd rather hammer a nail into my cornea than fight against it for even a second. But you know, I don't think I'm cut out for this. I can't sully my wholesome image by getting this aggressive. I think it's time I brought out my dark side. Everybody, say hello to my sinister doppelganger. Evil the what? Ha ha ha. I don't pay my taxes. In this video, I'm going to be going over one weapon for each class that I think is the most annoying to fight. My rules for ranking them are... There are no rules. <laughs> I'm evil the what? There's no rules. Also, be aware that this video contains opinions. And if you can't handle opinions... I've heard that the new season of Bubble Guppies is pretty good. Before I talk about TF2, you want to know what else is annoying? The fact that on US Netflix, I can't watch 8 Miles starring the lyrical miracle rap god himself, Nem Nem. If only I had one shot at watching it where I live. Wait, I do! Using today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark encrypts all your online data, keeping it safe and making sure all your online activity is private and secured. Surfshark also has a strict no logs policy, which means they will never collect or steal your data, which means you are in safe hands. On top of helping with your internet safety, Surfshark also allows you to change your IP address and switch countries on the fly. I can't watch 8 Mile here in the States, but with a little boop bop, I'm in Finland and can finally watch Nem Nem walk 8 miles or something. This also goes for other shows and movies or even online shopping deals. If it's not available in your country, just switch countries. And that still isn't all. There's a built-in antivirus, an entire search engine, it allows you to visit restricted sites, blocks cookies, and much more. If any of this even remotely piqued your interest, I implore you to give Surfshark the old college try, because by visiting the link in the description and using code the what Show, you get to use it for 83% off and you get 3 additional months for free. Come on, 83% is at least, like, uh, 33 more than 50. Massive thanks to Surfshark for helping the channel. Now, let's get back to being angry. Starting out with Scout and what I think is the least annoying weapon out of all of my choices, the Soda Popper. Even though Scout has the stigma of being an annoying little punk, his weapon choices are surprisingly tame. Weapons like the Critical seem like they'd be annoying, but sneezing on a Scout trying to use it is enough to kill them. I also don't see anyone trying to claim that the shortstop shove is game-breakingly annoying, although I'd love to see someone try. So I'm just gonna go with the Soda Popper. The Soda Popper isn't too annoying except for the hype meter stat, which lets you basically fly if you get the thing charged up. This isn't too much of a hassle for hit scan classes because with a little aiming and tracking, you'll kill them pretty easily. But for the projectile classes, it can be a bit of a pain. Even though Soldier could always just whip out the shotgun. I guess Demo is the only class that really struggles with this Soda Popper. This is the part of the video where you point at your screen and laugh at all the Demo mains who can't hit air shots. Please, laugh now. <laughs> Moving right on to Soldier with another weapon I don't think is that bad. We have the Direct Hit. Outside of the stigma of it being the best melee weapon in the game, the direct hit lands itself on my shit list mostly for when I play Scout and Engineer. If I had a dollar for every time I walked around a corner and instantly died to a direct hit soldier, I could buy a better game. And nothing is more fun than having your level 3 sentry get destroyed in seconds because a soldier halfway across the map shot two rockets. However, the direct hit is very fun to use. I personally use it in a loadout I like to call, I like to pretend I can hit air shots. Oh wow, a Kunai Deadringer spy. I wonder if that's gonna come back up later. It does. Alright, for Pyro, you already know. I don't even have to say it. This part of the script literally writes itself. 
It's probably the most hated weapon in the game currently, and for good reason. If you somehow don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a couple hints. It's a secondary, it shoots fiery projectiles, and it's not the gas passer. In all seriousness though, I don't know why Valve has kept the man melter in the state it currently is. Pyro being able to control the map and have this long of range for a close range ambush character is ridiculous. All a man melter Pyro has to do is look down a choke point and melt men. On top of its ridiculous long range damage output, the man melter also punishes the enemy for merely existing on the same team as a Pyro. All it takes is one enemy Pyro and now you have 30 plus crits you can use to absolutely annihilate every class from every range. Seriously Valve, nerf the man melter. Pretty sure that's all I have to say about that. Uh, I don't think I'm missing any. Oh, <coughs> oh, what's that feeling? It's like, ah, it's like I have this gut feeling that my like to dislike ratio is gonna tank on this video. Ah. Another weapon I don't find too bad but can definitely get peeved at is the loose cannon. You get one or two of these weenies spamming a payload or control point, and they are just going to be flinging you in all directions with the insane knockback it has. Getting tossed every which way is annoying, especially if you're being ubered. However, any annoyance factor the loose cannon has is also balanced out by the respect I have for a good double donk. So it balances out nicely. However. If we are counting alternate game modes, there's a weapon that beats out the loose cannon by a long shot. All of you medieval mode enjoyers in the audience already know. The Scotsman Skull Cutter is freaking stupid in medieval mode, man. Not because of its stats, but rather what's not listed. Unlike every other sword in the game, for some reason the Scotsman Skull Cutter is allowed to randomly crit. Combine this with the damage bonus, and you were able to one-shot everything in the game except heavy. Since random crits are more likely to happen the more damage you deal, you can get into a vicious cycle of random critting and one-shotting someone, only for it to increase your odds of random critting again and going on insane melee rampages sparing absolutely no one. If I'm being honest, I think it's downright stupid and it's why I don't play medieval mode. Okay, so imagine the Sandman actually did something. Now make it a gun and give it to an entirely different class. Looking back at the script now, that analogy makes absolutely no sense, but Evil the What has no sense of quality control, so it's going in the video. Heavy players that use the Natasha are truly a special breed. They know that the Natasha isn't even that good, but they don't play to get kills or even win. They purely live to feed off the tears of their victims and burn the entire server to the ground. As an evil man myself, I gotta respect it. Just like real life, one bullet is enough to slow your enemies to a crawl and have them begging for mercy. But unlike reality, you don't have to spend time in prison, so feel free to finish the job. It's kind of a somewhat well-known fact that by spamming the strafe keys, you can completely counteract the slow effect. But that initial slow is all you really need to secure a kill. And it doesn't account for air mobility like rocket jumping, sticky jumping, jetpacks, and the soda popper. Huh, nice full circle moment there. Maybe this script isn't completely unsavable. So yeah, despite what naysayers say, the Natasha is still really obnoxious to fight. Especially if you play classes with a lot of horizontal mobility like Scout and Demo Knight. Restricting movement in a shooter built so heavily on movement is always bound to be unfun. Whoa, what's this picture of Overwatch doing on screen? For Engineer, it's gotta go to the Wrangler. However, I would like to issue a dishonorable mention to the short circuit. I don't even know how engineer players sleep at night knowing just mere hours ago they spammed orbs while hugging the payload cart. But I just had to choose the Wrangler for this video. It's too good at too many things. You can aim outside of your sentry's normal range, increase its DPS, and triple its health. A level 3 sentry with a shield has over double the health of a heavy. And all you gotta do is press mouse 2 and look in the general direction of your enemies. You can also use the Wrangler with a mini sentry to have what is essentially a miniature heavy with pinpoint accuracy, as a Wrangled mini has as much health as a heavy. 
Shooting the engineer in control of the sentry seems like a dandy idea, until they hide behind the sentry like a total weenie using it as a damage sponge. Trying to fight a wrangler engineer basically takes the coordination of an entire team, which is bold to attempt in a casual pub. Even the direct hit gets snubbed out by the wrangler. However, there is a savior, something to combat the wrangler meta. The Enforcer. Yeah, I said the Enforcer was good and you all clowned on me in the comments, but who's laughing now? A full clip is enough to take out a wrangled level 3 from any range. So yeah, screw all of you Enforcer haters, embrace the Chad Enforcer spy. Vaccinator, Vaccinator, without a doubt, it's the Vaccinator. If you ask me, this is THE most annoying weapon in TF2 without question. I hate the Vaccinator so much I'd rather play Overwatch. Topical humor! I've had this clip in my TF2 folder for months and I've used it in like three videos because it so perfectly encapsulates why I hate the Vaccinator so much. As a heavy with pretty decent tracking, I focus fire this pyro with my minigun for 9 straight seconds while he dances around me like nothing's happening and misses all of his shots. By all means, I should have been the one to survive this encounter. But Vaccinator moment. And to the people in the comments who said the medic could have done the same thing with stock ubercharge, you'd be right. But keep in mind, the vaccinator charges 66% faster, and all four charges put together last longer than the stock ubercharge. And to the people who are still trying to defend the vaccinator by saying it takes multi-management skills and on-the-fly decision-making, I would once again like to refer to the clip. Are you sure about that? Having four charges of effective invincibility on demand is just way too powerful. It's impossible to bring down a vaccinator medic with an IQ above room temperature. Except for with, get this, the Enforcer, baby! Yeah, I said it! Who's laughing now? I told you the Enforcer was good and no one listened. I bet you look like a real clown right now. Recently, Sniper has been the class that the community collectively hates, which is really good for me because now I don't catch as much flack for when I play Pyro. Turns out it's a lot harder to avoid a Sniper that can insta-kill you from across the map than it is to just walk out of a Pyro's range. And you know, I get it, getting instantly deleted across the map is pretty annoying, but at least I can always take solace in the fact that that Sniper probably hit a montage-worthy shot on me, and I can respect that. This is something like the Holocaust. But when I die to a body shot, it's a different story. So no, I didn't choose the stock sniper rifle or the bizarre bargain for this list. I chose the Sydney Sleeper. But the what, you might be saying? The Sydney Sleeper does what the sniper rifle does, but much worse. Bubble guppies. I hate getting body shot, so of course I'm going to despise a weapon built around body shotting people. And even if you survive the initial body shot, you still get covered with Sniper's Golden Shower, so it's only a matter of time before enemies come to finish the job. So not only am I humiliated by being body shot, now the entire enemy team gets to see me covered in piss like a bad nightmare. On a side note, can you guys please stop calling me a piss baby in the comments? It makes me really self-conscious. Thank you. So yeah, I hate the Sydney Sleeper. I don't give a crud if you think the other rifles are overpowered and unfair to fight. However, maybe I can convince others that this Sydney Sleeper is just as unfair as Sniper's other rifles. But how would I even go about doing that? Oh, I know. It's genius. What? Why? <laughs> he's not. He's not bot guys. Uh, he needs to change yeah. his name. Then. Uh, what the? What the heck? <laughs> I 
I'd like to issue a formal apology to all of the Diamondback haters in the audience, because I'm not going to be talking about the Diamondback in this video. Truth is, the Diamondback really doesn't bother me that much. Instead, the Dead Ringer Kunai combo made the list. Remember when I said I'd be talking about one weapon per class? Pfft, I don't care, I'm evil the what, there's no rules. A while back I made a rant post explaining how I feel an infernal hatred for these two items used together, and a lot of the comments on that post were telling me to get good and have spatial awareness. I'd like to clear up a slight miscommunication there though, because I don't hate this combo because I'm the one dying to it. I hate this combo because my team always dies to it. I am sick and tired of these gosh darn spy mains in every casual game with 100,000 kills on their kunais, going around and farming all of my teammates, leaving me as the only competent person to go and hunt them, lest they do the same exact thing again. But if I catch up to them, they just dead ringer away like a little bitch, causing me to repeat the same process over and over and over again. The Dead Ringer gives Spy a 66% damage reduction, a speed boost to get away, and removes all debuffs when you activate it. So switching to Pyro to try and focus them so they leave poor old Pablo Gonzalez 2007 alone isn't gonna do jack, as they're just gonna run away like a little bitch face tanking hundreds of damage because they have as much health as a soldier and a 66% reduction in damage taken and immunity to all debuffs. It's like spy players don't even realize other weapons exist. Like, you do realize there's other knives, right? This bicycle is pretty good, take it from me. I know you probably watch a lot of spy montages and swear by the kunai and dead ringer, but like, you don't have to, man. For the love of God, just try something else. Hold on, wait a second. 66% damage resistance? No way. See? I TOLD you guys the Enforcer was good! This isn't even a video on annoying weapons anymore! This is just a video on why the Enforcer is the best weapon! That was my evil plan all along! The Enforcer reigns supreme! All hail the Enforcer! So yeah, that's all I had to cover. If you disagree or feel like I left something out, feel free to tell me in the comments. If you guys like this enough, maybe I could do a series, who knows? I try to read all of your... Oh, oh, hold on, guys. Uh, give me a sec. Whoa, the taxi thing was a joke, guys. Okay, okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks for making it this far. And if you want to see more, I am part of a group channel with a bunch of other TF2 YouTubers called Chuckle Nuts. So if you want to check out more stuff, feel free to do that. Chuckle Nuts. Link in the description. Oh, yay. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt.